What's going on everybody? I'm Johnny Brook. Welcome back to another Crafter Workshop video. In this week's video, I'm gonna show you how I turned these oak and resin bottle stoppers, actually 20 of them, and I just had a ton of fun with this project. I really don't turn enough. It's just one of those things that's totally organic. There are no measurements to hit or anything like that. So whatever shape kind of pops into your head, you can just go for it. It was really fun working through all of these and seeing how the different blanks turned out because when you're casting epoxy, especially with all these colors, you never really know what you're gonna get, especially depending on what shape you end up going with. And I just think these turned out great. So hopefully you guys enjoy this one. Let's go ahead and get started with the build. This project started a few months ago when H&H &H Distillery, a local distillery here in Asheville, North Carolina, reached out to me with a project idea. So they use these oak spirals to age their Hazel 63 rum, and they thought it'd look cool if I cast some of the spirals in resin and then turned them into bottle stoppers, which they could then sell in their tasting room. And as a big spirits fan myself, I loved the idea and thought the spirals would give the bottle stoppers a really interesting aesthetic. So I agreed to make a batch of 20 stoppers plus a display for the stoppers. Next, I needed to figure out how to make one of these stoppers as a test, and then I could figure out how to make them efficiently. So the biggest challenge I ran into when coming up with the process for making these stoppers was figuring out how to cast the spirals without them floating and without wasting a ton of resin. So epiphany struck when I was watching Bob from I Like To Make Steps video on turning an epoxy rolling pin where he used a 3D printed mold. And I was coming up with all kinds of ideas of using PVC pipe and things like that, but I have a 3D printer, so I jumped into SketchUp, modeled up a quick cylinder mold with an inner diameter just slightly larger than the diameter of the spirals, and then did a test print to make sure it was watertight, which it was. After that, I printed a bunch of molds, about 24 in total, and then could get to casting. So I used Total Boat High Performance Epoxy for this project, which isn't technically a casting resin, but still worked extremely well. Because this mold is so tight to the sides of the oak spirals, there isn't actually a very thick layer of resin in any one spot, so I wasn't really worried about the epoxy overheating. I used their medium hardener, which has a gel time of about 25 minutes, which ended up being plenty of time to get a handful of stoppers cast in each session. The slow hardener has a gel time of 40 minutes, but takes five days to fully cure versus just over three days for the medium hardener. To make things more efficient, I would mix up one big batch of clear resin, then split it up into smaller plastic cups and then add the colors. And this way I only had to do the longer mix once and could then just stir in the colors in the smaller cups. I experimented with pouring the resin into the mold first and then adding the oak spiral or vice versa, but found that pouring the resin on top of the oak spiral resulted in more air getting trapped in the mold, which resulted in big voids in the casting, which is obviously a bad thing. After getting the resin and spirals into the mold, I added some painter's tape over the top of the mold to keep the spirals from floating in the epoxy, and then put the mold into my cheap Harbor Freight pressure pot. And a pressure pot is pretty essential for this kind of project, as I would have had a ton of bubbles in my casting otherwise. I pressurized the pot to about 50 psi and then let it sit overnight. After the first pour, the epoxy had a tendency to kind of sink down in the mold and also absorb a little bit into the oak, so I'd usually have to cast these blanks in two sessions to get the molds totally full. And this was fine as it meant I could do multiple colors on each casting or leave half the blank clear and add color to the other half. And also the epoxy seemed to harden a little bit faster in the pressure pot, so I could usually add the second pour about two hours after the first pour. Finally, after getting a set of blanks cast, I could get to doing some turning on these bottle stoppers. So the stopper hardware I used is from Rockler and they sell a mandrel which is used to mount the blank on the lathe and allows you to turn the stopper to be perfectly flush with the hardware without having to measure. To mount the blank on that mandrel, I first needed to create a flat reference surface on one face of the blank and then drill and tap a hole. First, I would turn away the bottom of the mold and get a flat surface on the bottom of the blank. And as you can see, these soft jaws didn't do the greatest job of holding the blank. So I really had to take my time when facing off the bottom of the blank to keep it from flying out of the jaws. Next, I installed a drill chuck in my tailstock and drilled a hole slightly smaller than the tap. And I marked my depth with some painter's tape and then ran the lathe pretty slow, about 500 RPM, and made sure to back out the bit frequently just to keep too much heat from building up. Once the hole was drilled, I locked the spindle and then tapped the hole using a standard 3 8 by 16 metal tab. I started by doing this by hand, but <laughs> quickly switched to using a cordless drill later on to speed up the process. After tapping, I could thread on the mandrel, install the drill chuck in the headstock, install a live cinder in the tailstock, and get to roughing out the shape. So the nice thing about using the mandrel here is as long as your piece is flush with that ring on the mandrel, it'll be flush with the hardware. So this makes the whole process really simple, no measuring or anything like that. 
Also, I used one of these negative rake inserts from Easy Wood Tools for turning these bottle stoppers, which made a huge difference when turning epoxy. They're not sponsoring this video or anything, I bought this insert, but that negative rake angle on the carbide insert made for essentially no chipping, which is something I really struggled with a lot on my last epoxy turning project, that epoxy and scrap wood bowl. So after rough shaping the blank at about 2000 RPM, I would crank the speed up to about 3100 RPM and make a few finishing passes to really clean up that surface, and then I could move on to sanding. And the funny thing about these stoppers is that the sanding took just about as long as the turning since they're so small, and since these stoppers are about 50% epoxy, that meant I had to sand up to an extremely high grit to get a nice surface finish. So I started at 120 grit to smooth out the shape, and then moved on to 180, 320, and finally 500 grit, and I would wipe the surface of the stopper with a wet towel between each grit to remove the dust, and would also blast it with air to dry off the surface quickly. I also stopped the lathe and sanded parallel to the lathe bed after each grit, which really helped to remove the big scratches and just get a more uniform surface. After 500 grit, I could switch to this turning finishing kit from Rockler, which starts at 600 grit and goes up to 12,000 grit, and these are meant for wet sanding, which really helps to get the surface of the epoxy perfectly smooth. Again, I would wipe off the surface of the blank with a wet towel between each grit. So after sanding with the 12,000 grit pad, I could blast the stopper with air again to dry it off and remove any excess moisture, and then I could apply finish. I used this Hut Crystal Coat Friction Finish, which ended up working really well. I applied a coat, making sure to get nice even coverage on the stopper, and then set the lathe to about 2,000 RPM to buff out the finish. And this process generates some heat, which is what helps the finish dry almost instantly. And I would repeat this process two to three times to get a nice even finish. And I do want to experiment with a CA glue finish in the future, as I think that would have been another great option here. The final step in the finishing process was to buff out the finish on this buffing system. And you can see that I had this mounted on my smaller lathe so that I could quickly go from turning to buffing without having to swap things out on the lathe. The first wheel is loaded with a polishing compound, and then the second wheel removes any excess compound and leaves you with an incredibly smooth, glassy finish. And I think this is really the key to getting the results I did on this project. It was just amazing how much of a shine this buffing wheel setup brought out. Finally, all that was left to do was to install the bottle stopper hardware. And to do this, I added some thick CA glue to the inside of the blank and then threaded on the hardware. And I let the stoppers dry upright so the CA glue would trickle down into the threads, creating a nice permanent bond. After that, it was basically just repeating this same process another 19 times, just kind of trying to refine my process a little bit each time. So luckily I didn't really run into many issues, but here's how I dealt with those voids in the castings that I mentioned earlier. So first I rough turned the piece to expose the void and then added some painter's tape to seal the edges of the void and then drizzled some epoxy into the void using a popsicle stick. And after the voids were filled, I stuck the blanks back in the pressure pot to cure while I worked on some other blanks. And I think the key to turning all these stoppers quickly was to kind of do things in chunks. So for instance, I would drill and tap five or six blanks at a time, so I wouldn't have to switch back and forth between the regular chuck and the drill chuck over and over. Also using that cordless drill for tapping really sped things up. Also, after figuring out I was getting some voids in the blanks, I would just rough turn a batch of blanks to check for voids and then fill any that needed it to allow them to cure while I worked on the other blanks. And luckily I only had like four or five blanks with voids and this was primarily because my pouring technique more than anything else. If I were to do this whole project again, I would have probably made the molds a little bit wider to allow more space for air to escape. And this would have wasted a little bit more epoxy, but would have been worth it in the time savings. And so I'm obviously not gonna show you all 20 blanks being turned, but here's a couple shots of applying finish to two of the blanks. And you can see just how smooth that surface is even before buffing. It's really pretty amazing what all that sanding will do. Also, this blank was purely epoxy that was left over from one of the rounds of casting. And I just dumped four colors into one of the extra molds I printed, and I think this turned out super cool. I love that swirl effect I got by mixing the color. It just looks awesome. So with all 20 bottle stoppers turned, I could move on to making a quick display stand. I wanted to use up some small offcuts I had, so I decided on red oak for the sides and walnut for the bottle stoppers. I modeled up a quick shape and easel and got to cutting, but you can see that I forgot to combine the lines into one shape, and because of this, ran into some issues. First, the X-Carve was cutting each line individually, which meant the lines didn't really flow perfectly into each other. Second, because the shape was individual lines and not one shape, I didn't remember to add tabs. And so basically, I had to pause the machine and adjust the clamp positions along the way to make sure everything was held in place securely, and it ended up working out fine, but was just a little bit stressful. 
Next, I can move on to cutting the walnut pieces. And the first piece cut perfectly, no issues there, but then somehow one of the clamps slipped when cutting the second piece, which obviously resulted in the second piece turning out less than perfect. And I just cut another piece out of that first chunk of walnut and found another small chunk for the last piece, not a huge deal. After cutting the pieces, I added an eighth inch radius roundover to all the edges and then could sand all the pieces up to 180 grit. And while I'm sanding, let's talk about the sponsor of this week's video, Rockler Woodworking and Hardware. I used a ton of Rockler products during this build, including their Excelsior lathe, bottle stopper hardware, buffing system, bench cookies, and a bunch more. And I'll have links to all the items I used in the video description below. Rockler's got tons of great tools and accessories for your next build, and they're always coming up with new and innovative ideas to help make your woodworking more efficient and more enjoyable. Thanks again to Rockler for sponsoring this week's build. Finally, I could glue the pieces together. I wanted an eighth inch overhang on the sides of the display, so I added some pieces of eighth inch plywood on my workbench as spacers, and then glued and clamped the pieces in place. And it took everything in my power not to reinforce these joints with screws, dowels, or something similar, but they just don't need it. This glue joint is long grain to long grain and is plenty strong enough to support some bottle stoppers. After the glue dried, I added a few coats of spray polyurethane, which really brought out that gorgeous color of the walnut. Once the finish dried, I added some rubber feet to help keep the stand from sliding around, and this project was finished. All right, hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. I really love the way these turned out, no pun intended. They're just super fun, all the different colors. I think it's a really cool kind of aesthetic with the spiral oak going through the whole bottle stopper. It's just a really fun project. So if you guys do wanna buy some of these for yourself and find yourself in the Asheville area, they will be available at H&H &H Distillery. I'm sure they'll be there for a little while since obviously there are a bunch of them. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. If you don't already, go ahead and get subscribed to the channel. I put out new project videos like this pretty much every week. Also ring that little notification bell so you don't miss any of my future videos. Also, I'll have links to all the tools and materials I used in the video description below. And that includes links to that total boat epoxy I used as well as the epoxy pigments and then everything else I used for this project. Again, hopefully you guys enjoyed this one and until next week, happy building.